I was a chair in the Eric the Decker BA, but then I'm I'm always excited about new decks. Let's let's just cut the BS and get right to it. I love my decks; they're my crack. I have to admit, it's my drug. But uh, anyway, so this is the Magic of You Oracle, unlocking your hidden truths. It's by Fiona Horn and illustrated by Marcella Bolivar. And it is published by Rockpool. This is the first uh, deck I have purchased from that publisher. And I have to say, I am not disappointed. I'm huge about packaging. That is vital to me. Um, I love that it comes in this nice hard box. Again, I'm a box holic and I love that it can actually fit on your bookshelf very nicely. Um, I also carry my decks with me and unlike tuck boxes that literally get destroyed in my purse, these boxes do a fantastic job protecting the deck. All right, so let's dive right into it. I have removed all of the wrapping just to save time. So here is the guidebook. I personally love to read the guidebooks. Um, Many people don't, but I do just because I love to see or basically to read about what the deck creator was thinking. What was their source of inspiration? How do they interpret that card? And then I like to compare it to what I see in the card. So very nice book. It's 105 pages um, in the back. There are two entries about our author, so there's Fiona and Marcella. The other cool thing about this book is she gives you some layout ideas. Normally as a reader, mine are just organic. I don't have any specific layouts that I do, but I really enjoyed the ease and simplicity of the some of the layouts that she suggested, and so I made note of them in my tarot journal. Um, while the book itself is not in color, each of the card images is. She gives a little bit of her insight on what the card means and then a ritual for each card. Um, she recommends and suggests that you actually use the Oracle deck not only for readings, but as a source for meditation. So I really love that duality um, and the variety of uses for our decks. So nice book. I can't wait to read it. All right, so what do we have here? Oh, a little flyer, a little advertisement about uh, downloading their app for some card apps. Did I say that already? Sorry. Anyway, let's put this over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Ooh, nice cards. They are bigger than the standard tarot. I do have large hands. These are size 10 rings, but it's not that big where you can't handle it. It has a very nice finish and they are very silky smooth, very easy. You know how some decks you get, you have to actually kind of unstick them when they're brand new, not this one. So very nice cardstock, sturdy, flexible, but not so rigid. So thank you for, for thinking of that. Borderless, that is very important to me. I cannot stand borders, but anyway. Let's dive right in. So this is card number one, Avenoir, which basically is a uh, word from the Dictionary of Obscure Sorrows. And uh, it, it's, it conveys the image or the, the impression or the emotion that you have that desire that memory could flow backward. And her statement is, make peace with your past. And I don't know about you, but this is actually something I'm always constantly working on as I do my own shadow work for 2020. What a year to decide to do shadow work, huh? Okay, card number two, Bujo. Uh, this is actually Spanish for owl and transform the way you see. Detox, cleanse and restore yourself. We absolutely need to do this, all of us, to just take that sacred time to unwind and ground and just really center yourself. Doable, this is card number four. The key is within your grasp. Evervescent, cultivate love, that's card number five. Ooh, 
you know, it's funny when I see the word effervescent, I always think of the bubbles in champagne, but it is a word that really means being vivacious and enthusiasm. So don't do it half-hearted. If you're going to cultivate love, go for it. Just do it. Next is number six. That is epiphany and reveal your gifts. You know what? Don't hide your light. Shine. Be proud. Stand loud and proud. And epiphany, you know, is that just sudden, absolute striking realization or, or breakthrough. And unfortunately, I usually have my epiphanies in the most inappropriate times and the most bizarre places. But anyway, <clears throat> next is epoch. Pause in your journey. This is card number seven. And, you know, this is to really convey or to, to note that time in your life that is marked by just notable events. Um, we speed through life at a zillion miles an hour. And so we really need to stop and smell the roses. So pausing your journey. Number eight, you know, a, and that is everything in perfect balance. This is actually a Greek word that means a well mind and beautiful thinking and uh, crystalline clear thought processes. Euphoria, number nine, honor yourself. You know, what's interesting is for me, euphoria is that feeling of intense excitement and happiness and bliss. Like for me, going to Joanne's and having an unlimited budget and just losing my mind in the uh, fabric department. But, <clears throat> oh yes, back on subject. So I thought it was interesting, the word euphoria, but the image to me didn't really convey that. So I need to really kind of maybe study and look into these cards and really look at that imagery to delve deeper, I think. Fergan, number 10, become a loving mirror. This one I actually had to do a little research on, and it is an informal Hebrew word that means that just absolute, unselfish, authentic, and genuine joy in the accomplishments of others. And it's like when a child or a family member or a beloved and cherished friend really accomplishes something wonderful. Their joy is absolutely contagious. And so we need to revel in that and share that. Card number 11 is flashover. It's all in your head. Huh. I'm not sure what to make of that. <laughs> Love the card. She's gorgeous, but... I'm just thinking for me. Heaven knows I'm in my head way too much. I probably should step out of my head. Okay, number 12, Hex. Be still and allow the enemy to reveal themselves. Isn't it interesting that there would be a Hex card in an Oracle deck? Many Oracle decks are light and fluffy and sugary. And what I respect is that this deck, this card was included. Um, hexing in the practitioner world is a very, very touchy subject, and uh, I won't go into that because that's not what this video is about, but thank you, Fiona, for including that because you got to have the good with the bad and the bad with the good, and who even says hexing is bad? Okay, don't answer that and don't comment. <laughs> so, anyway, next is Liberation. Oh, that is a darn incredible card. So number 13, liberation, free yourself. Don't, don't be bound by the confines of, of society. Just be your authentic self and be true to who you are. And as Kevin Hart, the comedian says, do you, boo-boo, do you. All right, next is Lavaria. This was another interesting word that I had to look up. And basically it is a, the meaning at what, well, it is, you know, when you're lovesick and you, you just have that crush and all you can think, see, eat, breathe is that other person. Um, it's that just overwhelming, not quite an obsession, but an overwhelming um, just focus on, on love. And, oh, you know, those first stages of dating when you first fall in love and that, that hormonal high. So that's Lavaria. Let love grow, number 14. Maximus, number 15. 
How can you feed others when your own table is empty? This is a, a great Latin word for it means the greatest or the largest. Many, many of the readings for my clients that I do, I always end up with the cards that indicate that my client or the querent is so drained emotionally, but they're such a nurturing person, but they can't nurture because their cup is empty. You've got to fill your cup first before you can fill up the cup of others, okay? So take care of you. Next is Merak. Number 16, embrace oneness with the universe. Merak is a Turkish or, or um, um, no, yeah, if, if I remember correctly, it's Turkish for desire or yearning and that, that enjoyment um, for just relishing in life, okay? relish in life and mindful be mindful um this is interesting merak is also a name of a star but you didn't know that that is part that forms the base of the um big dipper and ursa major so embrace your oneness number 17 minimus commune with source Number 18, mosaic. Let chance play its creative role in your life. Sometimes so many people are so afraid to take a risk. And yes, sometimes risk, well, not sometimes, all the time, risk re requires an investment. And with investment comes risk. For it can either have a great reward or it can have a not so great reward. But you'll never know if you don't try. So, mosaic. Number 19 is Naz, and that is feel loved and proud. Now, this I thought was also interesting. Naz is actually a Persian name that is given to girls, which actually means pride and delicacy and love. 20, oblivion. Open your arms. This makes me think of that other card, Liberation. Just release. Be like Elsa and Frozen and let it go by heavens, by God, by all that's holy. I don't know. 21, opulence. It's time to lead. That's right. Stand out in the crowd. You have to wear your bling, then wear it. But let it shine. Number 22, Orenda. Honor your mystical creative force. This is an Iroquois name um, for a supposed spiritual energy that is inherent in people and the, their environment. So honor your mystical creative force. Number 23, Panacea. There's a solution for every problem. Oh, wish I could believe that. And perhaps, well, perhaps it's true. And maybe it's not always a solution I want it to be. 24, paradisical. You belong to paradise. Um, this word actually means that um, ideal or idyllic, um, heavenly, um, just incredible place. Paradise. Phenomenon. Number 25. Be still and listen to spirits. This is another one that I find to be very deeply provocative for me. I'll be candid and honest, even as a practitioner. I have, I'm a really huge skeptic. Um, and I think that's just because I have a swords mentality and I need to get out of my head. So this one speaks a lot to me on a personal level. Protection, set personal boundaries. Yes, yes, yes. It's okay to say no. Establish your boundaries. This is another one that um, hit me personally in so much as I don't do this as often as I should. And uh, this is a reminder that uh, boundaries are necessary. 
Resilience, burn away the past. That's number 27. Here we have 28, sacrifice. What can you let go of? Ah, number 29, Samandi, perfect acceptance. And this is a Hindu Buddhist word um, that talks about or relates to that highest state of mental concentration that you achieve, for example, while meditating that unites you with the divine. Serendipity, number 30, merge with the flow. 31, solitude, alone but not lonely. Tangibility, make your dreams real. Oh, this is just a gorgeous card. I believe this is about manifesting, you know, focus on it, make it happen. Translucence, love the darkness. Ubuntu, compassion for others. This is a South African Zulu term that means a person who is, well, basically, a person is a person through other people. It's that all-encompassing humanity that while we are unique and distinct individuals, we are also a collective. We so need more of this in the world. Vertigo, number 35, whatever you choose will be correct. And last but not least, card number 36, which the magic you seek is inside of you and let it flow. So that's it for the deck, and I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up, and I respect any and all feedback and comments. And if you like the Muse reviews, by all means, don't forget to subscribe. So be blessed and absolutely be abundant, and happy 4th of July.